Okay, so in this last video, I just very quickly uh, just tell, talk about the implementation ideas of Spark. Uh, so Spark being like a distributed computing engine runs on a cluster. Uh, as you can remember from our second week of uh, lectures in this course, we introduced the, the fact that Hadoop 1 at some point was using, uh, was basically mixing the execution engine and the resource management all in the same framework. And there was downsides to that, so eventually people moved it to Yarn, where you had disjoint frameworks. The Yarn was just managing resources, and then Hadoop on Yarn was managing the data flow of MapReduce on top of Yarn. So this is kind of the same here in Spark as well. You have Spark running on top of a resource management framework, for example, Yarn, or there is another uh, Apache open source project called Mesos that uh, can be used for, uh, for, for, for Spark as well. So you can have different uh, execution engines, uh, being Spark or Hadoop or maybe even MPI, running on top of a resource management framework, for example, Yarn. And then, of course, Yarn is managing the physical nodes on the cluster. And another thing that I want to talk about is the Spark scheduler. Uh, basically, what it deals with is the directed acyclic graphs, DAGs, uh, kind of similar to what a, another framework from Microsoft, Dryad, used to uh, introduce. Uh, so what really happens in Spark is that it takes your RDDs and transformations and you know the, the rest of these things and creates graphs of data flows out of those, out of, the, out of your algorithm, and then passes that graph to a scheduler module. Uh, the scheduler module can try to see uh, can try to identify stages within the computation. And each stage is a set of transformations followed by one last action, right? So that's why I talked about lazy evaluation of transformations, because a, transform, a couple of transformations together plus one action become one stage. And then the scheduler schedules one stage after another stage after another stage. Uh, the scheduler also is cache aware because in RDDs you can say RDD.cache and therefore the scheduler can utilize that information and say, okay, RDD1 is cached, RDD2 is using RDD1, so let me try to schedule the computation for RDD2 on the same boxes that are caching RDD1. And finally, uh, the Spark scheduler is partition aware uh, therefore, it tries to uh, consider the partitioning of the data to avoid shuffle. So, for example, it says, hey, um, one of some, of some of my computations are requiring uh, a group by operation, for example, in this picture. And then some other of my computations are using, uh, you know, unions and whatnot. And it tries to consider that information when it schedules different tasks so that it minimizes the network access traffic. So it minimizes shuffles as far as possible. Of course, I'm not going to cover everything about how Spark uh, is working under the hood. Uh, there are, of course, courses on that that you can uh, uh, continue learning about, uh, about Spark, as well as uh, documentation on the uh, Spark Apache page that is quite comprehensive.